Allahu Akbar. On what we need to do and are things that we need to be engaged in. Now, one is that you need to make information known. Right? You need to make information known. You need to get the uh, materials that we have on Islamophobia, and I encourage you to access the Islamophobia Studies Journal, as well as to, to access the report that CARE puts out, uh, that we work on jointly, in order to get this information out. What, what happens is the Islamophobia industry is all cross-reference each, each, each other, and therefore you find that there is an overwhelming avalanche. It's, it's actually a small minority groups that well-funded, and then they cross-reference each other. They know how to intensely monetize their search engines on Google and so on. So part of providing and getting the information out is a counter. Second, you need to expose and challenge those who produce and promote Islamophobia, including including protesting businesses owned by the Islamophobes. Including right, protesting businesses, having picket lines. I know that we often confuse Islamic adab with what you call acting as Uncle Tom. There is nothing having adab if you allow people to actually demonize you and still open business and having normal operation down the street from you. So it's time for you to get your, what you call, halal shoes and establish picket lines. If you are in a university, if you're a college student, actually make it a point. What is it? Either it's a fr every Friday and so on to actually protest these businesses and these individuals, right? In a nonviolent, peaceful protest. Uh, do you think that the Civil Rights Movement got the Civil Rights Act passed by just uh, not engaging in uh, protest in picket line, in boycotts, that's the type of work that is needed. Third, develop coalitions that challenge racism across the board. This is the time for us to engage in developing coalitions and to develop coalitions with those who are affected like us. Let me challenge some of you. For a long period of time, Muslims' coalition is actually wanted to be accepted by the dominant white culture. Right? And therefore, we wanted to be invited to the White House. Again, nothing against the White House. We built it. It's the people's house. But we're often invited, and we're on the menu. Right? And therefore, what we need is, again, to coalesce and build coalitions with people that have had long history of struggle, whether African Americans, Latino, Asian American, Japanese American, and the whole host of groups that have a progressive agenda and principled engagement. I am not for. PR engagement. I want principal engagement on positions on A, B, and C for us to actually have an effective agenda. Fourth, become more active in all areas of civil society. What we have today is that the bullies, civil society bullies, have dominated and are dominating society. And those bullies continue to dominate society unless you challenge them, in the same way that you challenge a bully in the, in the schoolyard. Like if your son or daughter come to you and say, oh, Daddy, Mommy, I have a bully that stole my sandwich today. You say, oh, no, just be nice to them. Give him the other sandwich. Right? Next day, the child comes and says, oh, the bully took my jacket. Oh, maybe he needs it. It's a nice jacket. We bought it for you, but give it to him. Right? Third day, same thing. You know what? From the first day, when your son or daughter come and tell you that there's a bully, you tell them you need to challenge him. You need to go to the teacher. You need to go to the principal. And I bet that if there is no response, you're going to get a posse and you'll be right there in the school the next day in the morning. You're going to sit there and say, show me the bully. That's the type of engagement. Bullies are dominating civil society. It's time for us to get out and be active and to be seen and engaged in civil society. Fifth. I want people to write. You need to write. If you don't tell your story, you're only going to complain about somebody writing your own story. At the base of it, it's going to be a wrong story. Right? Even if the person is careful, still, your story is not going to be reflected of your own pain, suffering, as well as hopes and aspiration. So I encourage people to write, to engage, and to fill the pipeline, because the Islamophobes are just filling the pipelines to the maximum. And what we need is a response 
right, to write and engage. And for those who are good with camera, like what we have the cameras in here, just do it two minutes. I know my students, right, you always are on Instagram and Twitter, but you're putting what type of Cheerios or what type of breakfast you have, right? Just take one minute and actually have something of meaning. That's something that will actually stick and will make a reference. Cheerios is just going to sell more Cheerios. It's going to sell more what you call cereal. You're, they're not paying you to advertise it. So might as well take an impact and make an impact of the social media and all of the means of communication that you have. And lastly, donate and support institutions like ICNA and others because resources are needed in order for you to mount a challenge. And that is, has to be part of our collection. Just put a dollar aside on a daily basis that you could actually contribute to those who are doing the work that is needed at a very critical time in our history. So, Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum. <laughs>